Okay. So there was an open letter uh, from Noam Chomsky and J.K. Rowling, and they were blasting cancel culture. Uh, it was also with 150 other celebrities. I'll go ahead and name some of the big names. Uh, one of those I saw, at least. Noam Chomsky, I love him. J.K. Rowling, love a goddamn book series. I've watched every Harry Potter movie over and over and over again. I love Harry Potter. Anyway, Gloria Steinem, Fareed Zakaria, David Brooks. Those are some of the big names that I saw. There were 150 others in there that some of y'all might know. Uh, I can leave the link in the description if you want to go check it out. But basically, they were blasting cancel culture. They were blasting the fact that they feel like they're constricted. They cannot freely express themselves because as soon as they say something that the that might be somewhat deemed as racist, transphobic, sexist, xenophobic, whatever, phobic, 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 racist, 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 whatever. And this is coming from voices on both the left and the right. They feel as soon as they say something, they're canceled. Their career's in, 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 in the career is tarnished. They're done. They're over. They can't make money. They can't produce anything else because they said one thing that might have been deemed by some community as uh, insensitive, racist, whatever. That's what this whole letter was about. I'll read what I thought was the best quote of the letter. They said, we refuse any false choice between justice and freedom, which cannot exist without each other. As writers, we need a culture that leaves us room for experimentation, risk-taking, and even mistakes. We need to preserve the possibility of good faith disagreement without dire professional consequences. If we don't, if we won't defend the very thing on which our work depends, we shouldn't expect the public or the state to defend it for us. So this created so much buzz, bro, all across social media. It was trending on Twitter for a good amount of time. And some people responded, um, you know, <laughs> they weren't exactly happy about some of this stuff, man. Here we go. So here's from Natasha Defon. She's a uh, she's a British mental health advocate. She said this. That's all the verifier marks. I knew she, she must have some type of sweat. She said, hashtag cancel culture doesn't really exist. It's a myth created by people who have been used to saying whatever they want without being challenged and are now surprised when there are consequences to their words. Hashtag Rowling is still a very rich best-selling author with a massive platform. Okay. <laughs> okay, what, what's your point? She still got canceled. She still got canceled, dog. J.K. Rowling said something that many deemed as transphobic. I, said, I saw some of the comments. They were a little bit transphobic. They were. She's one of, I've never even heard of something like this. Basically, it's this type of radical feminism where they feel like people who are trans, that's illegitimate. It's a weird type of radical feminism. Y'all can look it up, dude. It just because I don't really know the name. I I only read about it for like five minutes and I thought it was a load of bullshit. I don't agree with what J.K. Rowling had to say. Problem is, I don't want her canceled. And she did get canceled. She got so much. Dude, she, she lost deals. Like, J.K. Rowling got eviscerated for some of these comments, dude. So why are we sitting there and acting like this, this like, cancel culture doesn't exist? It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're a best-selling author. It doesn't matter if you're a poor, broke dude just trying to make it. You still get canceled. You still feel like you can't express yourself. You can't say what you're feeling. That's the problem, dude. You can't cancel people because it, it, it penetrated your thin skin. I'm sick of this stuff, bro, because it's so counterproductive to the debate. It's so counterproductive to the debate. And this has been going on for years and years and years now. It's, it, I think it, it started with college campuses. You, you, so you had people like Ben Shapiro. You had people like Stephen Crowder. You had people, you know, on the far right. And this is when it, cancel culture really started to become demonized. When they would come to college campuses and they would get canceled. They'd come and they're like, you're not speaking here. There was a huge incident, right? Ben Shapiro came to some college campus and they were like, no, you're not allowed here. Leave. It would create so much outcry. And dude, I fucking agree, bro. I hate Ben Shapiro. I think he spews verbal diarrhea on a daily basis, but he should be allowed a platform to speak. You should hear him out. You should have enough confidence in your own beliefs and your own views to have a war of ideas with him. And if you truly believe that your ideas are better than his, then you have to believe that your ideas will win out ultimately. And I happen to agree with you. I think that Ben Shapiro is a political dinosaur. In terms of his views, in terms of, in terms of that ideology, it's dinosaurs. It's dying out. That type of hate, racism, and xenophobia is dying out. That doesn't mean he shouldn't be allowed to speak. That doesn't mean he has to be canceled. Plenty of people have been canceled, bro. Why are we acting like they haven't? Why are we acting like this isn't a thing? 
Of course it's a thing. Grow up. Grow some thick skin. Be able to have an exchange of ideas, an exchange of expression, right? So that we can have that war of ideas and so that our ideas, the right ideas, the ideas that are progressive and are going to move culture forward, move society forward, can eventually win out. But if you don't even have the discussion, then they have plenty of right to be able to criticize you. Then it's distracting from the progress that we need to be making. You see what I'm saying? I, I hate cancel culture, dude. Anybody should be allowed to speak freely and say whatever they want, and then we can criticize them. We can criticize them. At least they, they put it out in the open. This is what we believe. So we can criticize them, hold them accountable, and say, hey, that's wrong. Shut up. <laughs> but actually, no, don't shut up. Keep speaking so that I can keep debunking you, and I can make you realize and make your followers, most importantly, realize how stupid that idea is so that we can move forward. We have to have an open debate. We have to have an open discussion. We, people need to be able to express themselves. One, it's their job. It's their career. It's their life you're putting on the line when you're canceling these people left and right. Two, it's just better for the culture. It's better for the society if we allow an open exchange of ideas. So I completely agree with this open letter, man. And, and anyone now canceling them because they made an anti-cancel culture letter, shut the hell up. You sound ridiculous. Grow some thick skin. Stop being a child. Let's be able to have an open debate of ideas in this country, okay? And in the world. Yeah, we ride it.